Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you my November wrap up. So I'm going to talk all about the books that I finished in November. And let's just say that this was not my strongest reading month. If it hadn't been for audiobooks, I would have read one novel. <laughs> Which is kind of sad, but I was just so busy. I was traveling a lot and so it just it just didn't happen and sometimes that's how life goes. So the first two books I finished in November were on the 1st of November. Um, I read volumes 6 and 7 of the Monstrous uh, comic series. And this series I absolutely love. In this one, we follow a character called Micah Halfwolf. And she has this like being inside of her that we see here on the cover. And uh, she's basically kind of like a chosen one character, but she always tries to find her own way, her own destiny. And uh, we have a big war going on. Um, at the beginning of the series, it's not a war yet, but it, it will lead to a war between the Arcanics, which are basically crossovers of humans and gods and the humans of the world. So they are fighting against each other and there's this like very creepy witch order who use the Arcanics, like body parts of the Arcanics for their magic. And that's why they are so interested in a war between the humans and the Arcanics so they can get to those organic uh, body parts, basically, um, which is very gruesome. So this is definitely a very, very dark adult fantasy series. Lots of war, lots of gore, some sexual content as well. So yeah, definitely keep that in mind. Um, the art of these is absolutely stunning. That's why I got into them uh, on the, in the first place because I thought that this was the most beautiful art I had ever seen in this kind of a graphic novel format. But by now I'm also thoroughly hooked by the story. I gave volume uh, six, that one, uh, 4.5 stars and volume seven, four stars. And overall, this series is just fantastic. So I hope next year I will have the time to reread it all before the next volume comes out, just uh, so I can really immerse myself again. This year round, I only reread the fifth volume in October and then went into these two. And yeah, it's just so good. Like the sixth volume definitely ends with kind of like a cliffhanger or just like something very, very dramatic happens. So I was glad that I already had the seventh volume to uh, go straight into that. And in the seventh volume, we get a lot more of the character build up and not so much of the kind of plot and the war and stuff like that. But I really enjoyed that because we actually learned something about some of the characters that were super mysterious up until this point. So yeah, overall, I would highly, highly recommend the series. I absolutely love it. And there's this little fox girl in it. And she's just my favorite character. Like her whole arc and what happens to her and the decisions she makes. It's just heartbreaking and cute at the same time. So yeah, I can't wait for volume eight next year, hopefully. And yeah, I love this. So then the first audiobook I finished in November was The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. This one I also absolutely loved. I gave it 4.5 stars. This is a romance novel that got compared to um, The House in the Cerulean Sea. But I would say that The Secret Society is definitely more of a romance and less of a kind of magical story about children or anything like that. But in this one we follow um, our main character who is a witch and she grew up in a world where witches stay hidden. They have this kind of coven but they call it or she calls it in her head the very secret society of witches. They don't have an actual term for it but uh, they meet I think 
uh, four times a year <laughs> and in between those meetings they do not talk to each other and they always change the location of the meetings and stuff like that so they try to stay like very very secret and uh, our main character is kind of annoyed at that because she feels very isolated very lonely and she can see that a lot of the other witches are trying to build their lives they have fiancés or stuff like that but it's like so hard for them to keep their identity a secret and then our main character creates a kind of social media channel where she shares her witchiness and because of that channel she gets asked to come to this place in somewhere in the, uh, the, the United Kingdom um, to teach three young witches who live in this estate and yeah then everything starts from there. Uh, I really, really love this book. I think that the themes of like isolation, belonging, being who you truly are and being loved for who you truly are are like really, really nice and done very well in this book. I liked our main character. I thought it was always quite easy to understand where she was coming from and why she was the way she was. I loved the way her magic was portrayed. Her like specialty is potions. So um, I really loved that because that was also always the thing that I found the most fascinating about like witchy magic is potions. So and tea. <laughs> Potions and tea is her specialty. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. We also have these three children who were all adopted. The whole idea of this world is that witches are always orphans because of kind of a curse that the parents of witches die and then they're orphaned. So all of these three children are basically adopted and so they're very very different not only um, in their like personalities but also in their kind of heritage where they came from, how they um, fit into this British world if you want to say like that. Um, and I also enjoyed those comments because uh, the author is not white herself, so her main character also is not white, but she also mentions that just because of her being not white doesn't mean that she can give advice to someone who's black or something like that, that this is still there's differences between these groups and you can't just be like oh you're a minority so you can give advice to every child from every minority out there and i just like the way that this was brought into the story like very sadly not like with a huge hammer or something like that it was just done really really well so overall this is just a beautiful cozy story about witches it's a lovely love story as well. We have that kind of crumpy sunshine dynamic with the librarian of the house where these uh, three girls live. And it was overall just very nice. <laughs> and I really enjoyed listening to that. Then the next audiobook I had finished was From Bad to Curse by Lana Harper. Now this one is also a witchy romance, but that one I found very disappointed, uh, disappointing <laughs> uh, because last year I had listened to Payback's a Witch, which is the first book in the series. And that one was a female female romance set in the autumn with the perfect autumn vibes. And uh, then we had this uh, kind of magical tournament as a plot. So I loved that book. I had so much fun with it. So I thought I will try the second one, even though I had a feeling that it might disappoint me. And unfortunately it did. Like uh, for starters, we have a female male romance and the male character just was not for me. He was the corniest person I've ever read about as a love interest. And it just, it no, it did not work for me at all. Like I could not think of him as being hot in any way. Like it didn't, no. <laughs> No. And so the whole romance didn't work for me in that regard because I really could not understand why the main character was attracted to that person. But okay. Um, then we have the vibes. Now the second book is set in spring, so no autumnal vibes that I was looking for, <laughs> unfortunately. And lastly, we have the uh, plot and the plot was a mystery. And I thought it was like super easy to guess what the conclusion to the mystery was so it was not shocking or surprising in the least to me when they actually finally figured it out 
So yeah, I gave this book three stars. It wasn't like bad, but it just was not what I wanted from it. And that was kind of sad. I did like the main character. She's a little bit of a more bitchy character. So she's from like the um, necromancer family who have Russian roots and stuff like that. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, the rest, the rest was just, it was okay, you know. And then the next audiobook, I think the last audiobook I finished in November was Cackle by Rachel Harrison. This is also a witchy book, but it is not a romance. Uh, this is a book about a woman who kind of, um, yeah, she's out of her luck. She uh, changed her job. Her partner wanted to break up and she doesn't really understand why, like she's very bitter about it. So she's moving to this very small town in New York and she tries to start new and she's very insecure about whether this is the right choice, but she couldn't afford living on her own in New York City anymore. So that's what she's going with. She's also a teacher and um, yeah. It's basically about her settling into this new town. And when she gets there, there is this very enigmatic woman that the whole town seems to regard highly, but also fear. And so she tries to figure out what's going on with that woman and they become quite good friends. Now I would describe this book as a coming of witch story. Um, it's very much about finding a, you know, solace with yourself, loving yourself and being enough for yourself. I think these are the main themes of this story. As I said, we don't have a romance in here. Um, it's more about you know coming out of that hole that sometimes you can find yourself in and just finding happiness again and especially finding happiness with yourself. So I really enjoyed that whole me that whole messaging and I thought the book was quite interesting. It is not a great book if you're afraid of spiders, then you should totally avoid this book, even though towards the end we also have some very cute spiders in there. Um, apart from that, there is some uh, slightly disturbing scenes, uh, but I wouldn't say it is horror. It has just some scenes that people who never read horror will be a little bit uncomfortable with. But apart from that, it is more like women's fiction, I would say, like just talking about, you know, how we can all be happy. Uh, even though society is trying to tell us that we cannot be happy if we don't have a man. <laughs> so yeah, I like this. I gave it four stars. It was a very fun experience, but I think especially with this book, it's very important to remember what you're getting from it. And it's not a horror. It's not a thriller. It just has some slightly disturbing elements to it. And then the last book I finished in November on the last day of November, <laughs> and it took me basically the whole month. It was a Beloved by Toni Morrison. I will have a complete reading vlog for this one as well. But just in short, in this book we follow a family after slavery was abolished, but we get some flashbacks to the time when uh, these people, especially the mother and the grandmother of this family, were working on a plantation called Sweet Home and what happened there. And this book is very interesting, um, very, very dark themes, a lot of like very horrible things happen as you would imagine with a book that deals with slavery. But there's definitely some things that are kind of even more gruesome than the stuff you would expect from a story like that. So uh, yeah, this is this is not for people who want to feel happy after reading a book. This is a very dark, sad story. And I did really appreciate it for that. Now we follow this family. We have the mother and the daughter. There were also two sons who have moved away already. The father is kind of missing. It is unclear what happened to him after slavery was abolished. And the grandmother has recently passed away. And the story kind of sets off when one of the other men from the Sweet Home Plantation gets to this house and kind of rekindles his relationship with the mother. And 
this is a story about haunting and about how you know some things that you do just never let you go basically and it's also a story about love and about how love can also be this very dangerous toxic thing in your life um and yeah it was just very very interesting now the writing style of this was definitely difficult for me because you know, English is not my first language, so sometimes reading more classic or modern classic books can be a challenge for me. But um, yeah, in this one particularly, I, <laughs> I had a very hard time getting into the writing style. I had to read sentences and paragraphs again and again to make sure that I kind of understood what was going on. And also what uh, was a challenge for me personally is the way that the timelines get uh, mixed up. So especially in the beginning, I had a hard time figuring out what is happening now and what was happening in the past, uh, because sometimes it, it just wasn't that clear. It just blended into each other a, a lot. And that is what this book is basically about, about how the present and the past are always interlinked in a way. Um, so it totally makes sense to write it that way. It was just for me trying to fit the puzzle pieces together of what's going on it was a bit challenging. So I would definitely say that I did not understand everything that was going on in this book. Like, I will probably have to reread this like five times to get a proper grasp on all the things that were going on here. But there was a lot to laugh for me personally. And especially what I enjoyed were the grandmother character and her backstory. I thought that was a part that just really, really gripped me and my feelings. And as I said, just this whole discussion on love and what it can do to you and how dangerous it can be to love, especially if you're in a situation like slavery times, like where loving can be the most dangerous thing you do. So yeah, I found that to be very, very interesting. I think overall, if I rate my reading experience with this book, I would give it 3.5 stars, but that's like a personal reading experience and not quality of the book rating, basically. So we'll see when I get to reread this. I definitely need a little bit more headspace than I have right now for this book, but it was very interesting and I would still highly recommend to check it out if you feel up to it. So that's all the books I have read in November. So let's, you know, hope and fingers crossed that I can read a little bit more in December. But uh, yeah, with Christmas and everything, it's always super busy. So we'll see where we can get with that. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye.